Once more, I warmly welcome everyone to another great charismatic hour of the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. The theme of this charismatic hour session is when the eyes or the ears deceive the mind. When the eyes or the ears deceive the mind. We now need to go quickly to join our music team as we take some inspiration before we launch proper into what God has for us at this uh, particular charismatic hour. We are going to sing the hymn, Higher Ground. Preparation to receive God's uh, spoken word, the infallible word of God. Eternal Father, I bless your name because of your greatness, because of your power, because of your almightiness. Thank you very much, Lord, in glory, because you know whosoever that is uh, seated or standing or lying down or watching. And you know whatsoever be the condition, a circumstance of each and every person out there in all the world. For it is written, there is no any creature that is not manifest in their sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Grandfather in heaven, here we come this day. Even 
First of all, with this uh, great charismatic hour period, Lord in glory, let thy spirit and thy word, the instruments of creation and recreation, do the work of creation and recreation and circumstance bulldozing out of the lives of the people that they may rejoice and be happy in the Lord. Thank you very much. That they that are outside the kingdom might have cause to come into the kingdom. Great Father in heaven, through the mechanism of this charismatic hour, the things that you have slated to do, which you are going to do, bring, draw men into the kingdom and put the joy of faith even in the hearts of the believer. Thank you for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed, and I hear the people saying amen everywhere. Amen. amen. The thing once more is when the eyes or the ears deceive the mind. I want to begin this uncommonly insightful message by reminding every one of us of what God said concerning his spoken word. What did he say concerning his spoken word? We look at uh, Psalm 107. 107 uh, of the Psalms, and um, verse uh, 19, and um, verse uh, 20. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he severed them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The word of God is sent to heal the people and to deliver them from their destruction. That is the testimony of the Bible, and that is true to the letter. Remember that God has shown us in the 17-point declaration of the previous year that this time around is going to prove that every line of Scripture is true to the letter and works wonders. Now, in John's Gospel, chapter 6, we have the information of Jesus Christ, our Lord, on the potency of uh, the Word of God. In John, chapter 6, and we are reading verse 63. John, chapter 6, and verse 63, it says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They contain, as it were, particles of the Holy Spirit and they give life. So the word we are hearing is the word that gives life, brings you from death to life and changes your circumstance. Now we're going to look at, one, the role of the eyes, two, the role of the ears, three, the role of of the mind. Four, when the eyes deceive the mind. Five, when the ears deceive the mind. And then six, we will take our lessons. We will not show what to do. First of all, let's uh, uh, describe or define the role of the mind. First of all, the mind is the storeroom of your human house. I say that again. The mind is the storeroom of your human house. The mind acts as the control gadget, the control tower of your whole system. The mind is that aspect of you that determines what happens to you. Listen to me. If you will be headed to heaven or hell at the end of life, it is uh, determined by the condition of your mind. It's a function of the condition of your mind. If you will succeed or fail, it is a function of the condition of your mind. If you will uh, defeat and uh, overcome all the maneuvers of the wicked one, even as a believer, it is... Uh, determined by what your mind is like. The function of your mind is what determines that. So the mind is that aspect of you that cannot be joked with. In Proverbs chapter 4, we see the function of the mind, what the mind does. Proverbs chapter 4, and we are reading verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, 
And we're reading verse 23. And it says, keep thy heart, that is, thy mind, with all diligence. Listen to me. There is a word that is silent there between heart and wit. And that word is sound. Keep thy heart, your mind, sound with all diligence. Diligent means steady effort. For out of your mind, out of it are the issues of life. Everything about life is determined by what the mind is saying, the condition of the mind. Keep your mind with all diligence. It is the control tower. It's the control button of your whole system. In Proverbs chapter 14, and uh, we are reading verse 30. Proverbs chapter 14, and we read verse 30. A sound mind, a sound heart, is the life of the flesh. A sound mind is the life of the flesh. If your mind is sound, your body is healthy, your words are healthy, your words are not damaging, and your actions are healthy, your actions are good, your reactions are good. But when your mind is polluted, when the storehouse is not a sound, everything about you is not sound. Your actions will be unsound. Your reactions will be unsound. So that is the role of your mind. The mind is uh, the seat of all activities. Now, what about your eyes? Your eyes are those organs with which you see objects in front of you or by your side or up, or behind. You see objects and you see persons to recognize them. That is the role of your eyes. And once your eyes see, information on what is seen is sent into your mind. I say that again. Once your eyes behold, information is sent on what you have seen into the mind through your eyes. And now what is the role of the ear? The role of the ear is for you to hear sound, for you to hear words, for you to hear what people say and the, uh, the sounds of anything. And then what also you hear with your ears now send signal into your mind, the storehouse, the control tower. Now I want you to take note that this is not a biology class. I want you also to take note that it is not a medical school class or lecture. And I want you to know also that it is not a psychology class. It is a Bible class. And so if he doesn't agree with uh, biology, excuse me. If he doesn't agree with medical science, excuse me. If he doesn't agree with psychology, excuse me. I am telling you biblical things and biblical truths. The mind is a seat of activities. It determines what will happen to you, determines whether you will fail or succeed, and so on and so forth. Now, you know what? We're not asking the question, or we're not considering the point, when the eyes deceive the mind. When the eyes deceive the mind. Now, we're going to look at the examples of uh, the eyes when they deceive the mind. And I'm reading right away from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into his ship and to go before him onto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone, but the ship, the boat was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary, boisterous. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good share, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, 
bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Why did you doubt? Now, what happened here is uh, an example of uh, the eyes deceiving the mind, sending a wrong signal. Now, they had uh, seen a figure coming here on the waters, and they thought it was a spirit, some kind of demon or so, coming to attack them. And they were afraid. They have seen something, and what the, their eyes have seen now sent some signal. And the eyes now sent some signal, said, you are perished, you are finished. And then the mind received the signal, you are finished, and they cried out. But now the Lord Jesus cried now, stilled that, and now said something that now made that which was planted into the heart, into the mind, to disappear. Now, he disabused the mind of what the signal the eye sent. It is I, be not afraid. And then they became consoled, and the mind was sound again. The deceit was over. And now, Peter now said in his boldness, If we be thou, speak a word and give me some assurance. I know your voice, and I know what you are able to do, and I know your capability, and I know your love for us. You will not want me to perish. Give me a word that I come on the waters to meet thee. And he said, come, and based on the word that he received. Then he stepped out of the boat and began to walk to Jesus. But soon the eyes now saw something, the boisterous wind. The wind became violent. And now when he sensed that, when he saw that the waves were making noise and tumultuously, and then the heart was deceived again. And then he forgot the master. And then he forgot the word of the master. He lost sight and then began to sink. When the eyes deceive the mind, the person will sink. When you allow your eyes to deceive your mind, you will do the nonsense. When you allow your eye to deceive your mind, you will Speak vulgar words. When you allow your eye to deceive your mind, you will say, I am finished. There is no hope. There is no salvation. The children will not be saved. My husband will not be saved. He appears to be eternally doomed. And then this circumstance will not change when your eyes are allowed to deceive your mind. We are here in the coronavirus pandemic era. And then you see that people's Eyes are seeing people, seeing corpses are being lowered to the grave, even long trench of graves. That is massive trench, and the coffins are being lowered, one on top of the other. And somebody seeing that, and then the person is saying, it doesn't appear we survive. I am 70 years old, I am 80 years old, and they say that uh, the people that are of old age are more vulnerable. They are the people that will not survive. And we have seen even people that are young, they are not surviving, and they are dying everywhere. And then the eye is deceiving the mind, and the mind is caving, and you are sinking already. When the eyes are allowed to deceive the mind, you will do what you should not do. You begin to cry when you should be singing. You begin to cry and call upon your forefathers when you should just rejoice in the Lord and then say, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my shield. When you should just be doing something else, you will be doing another thing altogether. Now, when the eye deceives the mind, you see that there is danger. Now, that was the case of Peter. What about the case of uh, the people of Israel? Now, the people of Israel were on their way to Canaan land, 
And then God has told Moses uh, in Numbers chapter 13 to send 12 spies representing the 12 tribes of Israel to spy out the land. And now he told them, he gave them a particular word, a particular encouragement in Numbers chapter 13. And we are reading uh, some encouragement that he gave them there. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 18, and see the land what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what them land is, what they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. Look at verse 20. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land, be of good courage. But you know what? When the people went, they saw the sons of Anna, they saw the giants, and they saw the mighty men, they saw the fence city, and the fence was high and very, very thick. And then they said, we are finished, we are undone. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. What we saw shows that we cannot, uh, cannot go to do that place. We cannot conquer them. Their eyes deceived their minds, and uh, they could not remember. Their eyes removed uh, the word of encouragement. Their eyes removed uh, the word of the Lord, the promise of God that he had made unto the children of Israel through Abraham long ago, and they know the story very well, but this time around, their eyes deceived their mind. And now what did they say? And verse 23, and they came unto the brook of Esco, caught the uh, fruit of the land. And then, but verse 26, what did they say? And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Param, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and all the congregation uh, and uh, showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land, whither thou sentest us, and uh, surely floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites in, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb steal them. But you know, they said in our, our sight, when we saw these things, we were like grasshoppers. Look at verse 33. And, uh, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anna, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. It is them that concocted that. It is not because they did not speak unto these giants. They did not speak unto the people. They were spies. The people didn't see them. Now, but what they saw now made them to even say what the people didn't say. They said, in our sight, in our sight were like grasshoppers. And in their sight were like grasshoppers. But the people you are saying that they saw you as grasshoppers didn't see you. That is what happens when their eyes deceive the mind. You will become a grasshopper. You become a prey. The lion is by the corner when there is no lion. The killer is by the corner when there is no killer. In fact, you'll be hearing the foot marks. You'll be seeing the foot marks of, uh, of the killer when there is no killer around. That is what happens when the eyes are allowed to deceive the mind. You remember... The case of, uh, of uh, the Gehazi, even the servant of uh, Elisha. Now the Syrian king has sent uh, soldiers to arrest, uh, arrest Elisha. And then early in the morning, this person woke up and then went out and saw that they were surrounded. And he said, alas, my master, we are finished. We are undone. Now the eyes deceive the young person, we are undone. But the person that, didn't, that wouldn't allow the eye to deceive him, to remove knowledge from him, said, hold your peace, we are not undone. 
Hold their peace. Now, he prayed to the Lord to open his eyes. Now, that is about that. When the eyes deceive the mind. Now, you are into trouble. The person that allows that is into trouble. Now, when the ears are allowed to deceive the mind, the same thing happens. When the ears are allowed to deceive the mind. There is the case of this prophet. His name is uh, Elijah. And you know about him. That man of boldness that went to Ahab and said, As long as the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, whose servant I am, there shall be no rain, there shall be no dew, three and a half years until I say otherwise, unless I say otherwise. It was that same person that uh, God had kept, uh, God sent him to by the brook, and he drank of the brook, and the ravens gave him food morning and evening. And then, when the brook dried, the Lord sent him to the widow woman, and the miracle took place. And then, the widow woman sustained him, even by the miracle that uh, Elijah had uh, proclaimed. And you know what? But at this point in time that he returned to continue his ministry, now, he had uh, carried out that glorious competition where he defeated the prophets of Baal, and executed them. And now, but I have and now told the wife Jezebel, and Jezebel said, by this time tomorrow you are gone. And then he heard the news that Jezebel, that terrible woman that was in charge, not Ahab, the king, now he feared, and he ran for his life. And you know the story, and then he began to say, when he became tired and frustrated, he said, I want to die. Lord, take away my life. That is what happens when you hear. When somebody hears that uh, there is danger. When somebody hears that uh, your enemy is after you. When somebody hears that there is uh, going to be uh, such an economic crunch, such an economic downturn, and people will lose their employment, and the situation will be very worse. People will die of hunger. When somebody hears all these things, there is the likelihood that uh, your ears deceive your mind. And then you take all these things and then nurse them, and they become a load. They become a frustration. Even before the thing happens, even when the thing has not happened, when the Ears are allowed to deceive the mind. What will happen is you will be on the run. And nobody is pursuing you. What will happen is that you will want to die. You will want to commit suicide. When the ears are allowed to deceive the mind. As somebody has said you are a no-do-well. You cannot succeed. And then the circumstance that is before you is overwhelming. And the circumstance appears to be saying, there is no way you can get out of this situation. And then, you allow that into your mind, you are done for. When the ears are allowed to deceive the mind. You know that uh, in Numbers chapter 14, the rest of Israel, when they had these things, let's see what happened. When they had the evil report of those people. Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? We are not better for all to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Let us return to, into Egypt. When you hear some, uh, some noise, when you hear some noise from Satan, when you hear some noise in the dream, when you hear some, some person that is after you, or some circumstance that is telling you, look, there is no way, then, oh, let me return to Egypt. Let me return to sin. And I'm asking you, you were with Satan, 
And then he didn't do you any good, but you want to return to him. If you return to him after that you have left him, you will be the worst for it. He will deal with you ruthlessly. He will ask you the question, why did you go away in the first place? You are looking for trouble. So, when the ears are allowed to deceive the mind, now the person goes in for it. Now, but you are asking me, if this be the case, what do I do? What to do? Oh, good. What to do? I show you what to do. I show you what to do. And let's go do what some people of old did. You know what they did? They saw and they did not see. They lost sight and gained sight. They lost hearing and gained hearing. I'll show you some people, a few people, who lost sight to gain sight. Who lost hearing to gain hearing. Let's go to the Philistines. The Philistines were not children of God. They were not Israelites. And I'm reading from 1 Samuel chapter 4, reading from verse 2. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was meeting before the Philistines and the slew of the army in the field, about 4,000 men. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore had the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us uh, fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when he cometh among us, he may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh, that they might bring from them the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts. Quit dwelleth between the cherubims, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas, we are there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout. So that the earth rang again, the earth quaked with a shout that they shouted, because the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come into their camp. And now they were now very, 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 very assured that deliverance and defeat of the Philistines will be their Lord. And verse 6, and when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they uh, understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. Of course, they were right. And they said, Woe unto us, for there had not been such a thing here to fall, before now. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Now what they heard, the, the tumultuous shout of the, of the Jews, saying the ark of the Lord is with us now and we're going to undo them. And then they heard a mighty, mighty noise. And then they said, what is it? And then they said, okay, the Ark of the Covenant. And they remembered the ability of that God. And they said, woe is us. Woe are we. We are undone. We are finished. We are going to be massacred. But somebody said, some leader said, some captain said, verse 9, be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have born to you, quit yourselves like men and fight. Listen to me. Somebody disabuse the mind of the deceit of the ears. Somebody disabuse the mind of the deceit of the ears. Listen to me. I know that you are there and then some information has gotten to you. And But I am telling you right now, I am wanting to disabuse your mind of uh, the deceit of that information that have, has filtered into your ears and sent jittery into your bones and sent goose pimples into your body and you are quaking. And you are saying, I'm going to die. And you are saying, I am not going to have any success. It is not well with me. My father is dying. My mother is dying. My siblings are dying. Every person is sick. And that's the information you got. Every person is sick in the family. Everything is uh, 
is uh, is awful in the family. My children, none of them is listening. None of them is listening. I am undone. Somebody said the children that you left uh, even in the village or somewhere and traveled that, uh, oh, they are finished. Somebody said the wife you left and traveled to somewhere that your wife is gone away, is going wayward and things like that and your mind has been wrecked. Now, but somebody must tell you, and that person is me, I am telling you, quit you as man. Quit you as man. Don't let your heart be captivated. Don't let the information deceive your mind. The Lord is God. The Lord answers prayers. The Lord cares. Does Jesus care? Oh yes, I know he cares. Does Jesus care? The songwriter said, yes, I know he cares. He is pained with what I go through. That is what you ought to do. Now these people encourage themselves. Do you know about David? Do you know that David saw something and then that happened at Ziklag? They had gone out and then when they came back to Ziklag, now the place had been destroyed and their wives and children had been taken captives. Ah, everything, wife and children. Not only goose, but wife and children. The place was burnt. And they cried and cried and cried and cried and there was no more strength to cry. And now, but now the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. What did he do? He said, the Lord is my strength. What did he do? He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want protection. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want deliverance. I shall not be in need. Do I pursue and listen to me if he did not disabuse the mind of the wrong signal of the deceit? Would he have been able to do that? He wouldn't have been able to do that. Now listen to me. Sometimes... Uh, some people, because of what you see, because of what you hear, you cry and cry and cry and cry. Listen to me. Crying does not help matters. You cry and cry and cry. Look at my life. It's rest. Look at my marriage. It's rest. Look at I don't have mother. I didn't have father. Everything about me is negative. Why is it that everything about me is negative? Who told you that everything about you is negative? And you begin to cry. Listen to me. As you are crying and crying and crying, you are destabilizing your, your very senses. You are wrecking your emotions, and worse things will happen. And the devil will take advantage of that. But these people said, quit you as men. Don't, uh, don't take that thing that you have. Don't let it mean anything to you. And then they accepted the encouragement and then went and captured even God. As it were, captured God as it were. Do you know that that uh, Ark of a Covenant was the presence of God? If you want to know, read further, you will see what happened unto them when they captured God. But this time around, uh, they were able to capture God because they now refused the deceit of their ears. So you can capture not the God of heaven. You can capture Satan. You can capture Satan, even the enemies of your life, the demons. You can capture them and put them in jail. When you refuse that what you see or what you hear will, will uh, destabilize you. Listen to me. You ask me, what do I do? Do like uh, David. Do like David. David first Goliath. You need to know something about Goliath. Goliath was uh, a warrior. Goliath was uh, somebody that had a height. Listen to me. It was stated of Saul, the first king of Israel, that he was the tallest of all Israel. And everybody that was tall was uh, just about his shoulder. And now let us assume that Saul was uh, about seven feet now, let us assume that David was about six feet or six feet three. Or let us assume that David was six feet four inches. I am making an assumption. Listen to me. Bible commentary says that one cubit is 25 inches. 
And then the height of Goliath was six cubits and a span. And then altogether, the height of Goliath by that uh, arithmetic is 13 feet 4 inches. 13 feet 4 inches. And uh, uh, David was 6 feet 4 inches. What's the difference? David was not up to half of Goliath. That height was intimidating. That height could finish somebody. That height alone, that sight. Not only the sight, not only the sight, and the man began to pour out words, derogatory words. And then was saying, look at this ruddy boy. Look at this youth. And he want to face a warrior like me. You serve the Saul, the king of Israel. I am a Philistine. I curse you by my gods. And then I will show you, I will mangle you, I will mangle you, tear you to pieces, and I will spread your flesh onto the base of the air. Both the sight and the words were terrible. But David lost sight to gain sight. David lost hearing to gain hearing. David was hearing something. David was hearing something. David was hearing the Lord saying to him, I am your shepherd as you have been a shepherd unto your sheep. I am your shepherd. Do not mind this person, this uncircumcised person. David was listening to the spirit of God and was not close his eyes unto what was real. Close his ears to what was real. And then, as a result, he saw something. As a result, he heard the voice of the Lord. As a result, he saw the glory of God and who Israel were to God and who he was to God. And then, as a result, he was able to remember what exploit God enabled him to do in the bush. And then, if he did not calm his mind, if he did not allow the deceit, he would not be able to remember. But then he remembered that uh, the lion and the bear came. And then the Lord emboldened me, and I pursued the lion, and I pursued the bear. And then took up the lamb alive from the mouth of the lion, and tore the lion to pieces, barehanded. And it was because he did not allow the deceit. And then the heart was emboldened, and he said, you come unto me. In the name of your gods, you come unto me with your expertise. You come unto me with your prowess. But I come unto you in the name of the Lord. You know the story. The rest is history. Go do like David. Now, who else? Go do like the Canaanitish woman. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, you know what? The woman had come. Oh, help me, oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. And then the Lord didn't say anything. Kept silent. Do you know that silence, silence can, can make somebody to pack up. You came to somebody, came to pastor. Pastor, I am sick. Last night I didn't sleep. Oh my God. You came to somebody that you, you need help from. And you now explain all your matter and the person didn't say anything and walked away. Your matter will be worse. Your situation will be worse if you don't take that. And that's what happened to the woman initially. And then the disciples wasn't in and called unto the Lord and said, send this woman away. This woman is disturbing us. Send her away. And now to worsen it further, the Lord Jesus Christ, the woman pressed and the Lord Jesus Christ said, meanwhile, what I am doing, my ministry is to Israel. Meanwhile, it has not become universal. Now, I cannot take the things that belong to children and throw to dogs. Ah, so this woman was a dog. And then the woman said, okay, I know your argument, your argument is great, but my argument is great too. Listen to me. It takes somebody that loses sight to gain sight in order to uh, survive the present world. The present world that we are into is uh, saturated with uh, all the maneuvers of the wicked one. 
The one third of the angels of God that went into rebellion have gone themselves, the Lord told me, and they want to undo every human being, if possible. Even the believers, and the pursuit is very terrible. Now what do you do? You see the pursuit, you, see the, you, you get into dreams and you see it, you see the things around you, you see that there is lack everywhere, you see that there is personal illness everywhere. Right now, diabetes has been forgotten, Right now, hypertension has been forgotten. Renal diseases have been forgotten. And then tuberculosis has been forgotten. And then cancer has been forgotten. What is raining now is coronavirus. And more and more and more of the pestilences of these end times. Now you ask, ah, but this thing, this thing is very terrible. Yeah, this thing is very terrible, very, very terrible. Your eye is saying, sending the signal that things are terrible. And the voices we are hearing are saying the thing is very terrible. Your situation is unrecoverable. But that is not the truth. That is a deceit. That is a deceit, pure deceit. Remove the deceit from your life. Listen to me. Now I tell you about Jesus. It is fantastic what happened in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Look at what happened. And this is what uh, we do. This is uh, what to do. Do like the master. Luke chapter 4. And verse 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And that went, were delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it's written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance unto the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wonder at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me, This proverb physician, he thyself, whatsoever we have had done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is acceptable in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months. When great famine was throughout all the land, but to none, unto none of them, of them was a last sin, except unto Serapata, a, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisius, Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, serving them and the Syrian. And all there in the synagogue, when they heard that these things were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into onto the brow of the hill where on the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day, listen to me, you must know something about Jerusalem so as to be able to know what happened here. Jerusalem is a, a city that is on the hill. Not just a small hill, the city on the hill. And now the hill has a valleys, deep valleys. Here and there, deep valleys. The hill, the city of Jerusalem, both the east and the west, they are on the hill. And then, but they have valleys. And if you are coming from the west, for instance, from Tel Aviv, you need to go, and as you are reaching Jerusalem, then you begin to ascend. Do you know the height you will go? You will ascend. The city is built 762 meters. That is 2,500 feet above sea level. That is it. And then those gullies, listen to me. This place is the level. And then those gullies, and uh, from the sea level to the top where the city is built, 2,500 feet. 
And now, down there, down this way, down that way. And so, they pushed him in that day. And then he was hearing their voices. He saw what was happening. He saw the crowd. Listen to me. He saw the crowd. He heard the voices. And they were saying, today is your end, mad man. They were saying, didn't we say that you are a Samaritan? Today is your end. And there was, there was a tumult. And they were saying those things and they were pushing. And then they were pushing. But know what? The Lord Jesus Christ was unruffled. He did not allow his eyes to see. Neither did he allow his ears to send the wrong signal and deceive the mind. He was saying, it is written concerning me that he will give his angel charge over me. That they should hold me on their hands so that I do not crash and then break my bone. Now the Lord is my shepherd. The prophet cannot perish out of Jerusalem. I have not finished the work I need to do. The death that is assigned to me is not the death of being pushed from the cliff and then tumble down and break my bones before I reach the bottom. The death I am to die is the death of the cross. And then as he was saying that, I saw in that, those things that he was saying were we are countering what the people were saying and what they were doing. And at a point in time, he just shrunk out and pushed them aside. And then did a 180 degrees turn around and the people were watching in bewilderment and then he walked away. Praise God. Praise God. That is when somebody has refused to allow the eyes or the ear to deceive the mind. Your mind it determines what will happen. Right now, when your mind is sound, when your mind is sound, any kind of miracle can happen. Any kind of achievement can take place. When your mind is sound, any kind of achievement can take place. You can become undiable, even you can live through to the rapture. Take it, because this is the truth. Do not allow your eyes or your ears to deceive your mind any further. Guard your mind. Guard your heart. Make it very sound. Make it sound because out of it are the issues of life. I want to encourage every person that has heard this word, whatsoever situation, that you have Christian person, listen to me, what the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. I can overcome every temptation. I am headed to heaven and I'm not going to head to hell. I've headed to heaven 10 years ago and I'm not going to make a turn around. That is what you should be saying. You will not allow anything. Oh, oh. They say you cannot get married and you are saying, who told you? The other day we gave the message that is saying, who said it? Who said it? Who is the person that is saying that it will not be well with you? Who is the person that is uh, mocking you? Who is the person that is wanting to discourage you and put something in your mind? What sight is it that you are seeing? What sight is it that you are seeing? What voices are you hearing? And then they want to damage, they want to send bad signal, pollute your mind that you may sink. Don't sink because you are not supposed to sink. You are supposed to go up. You are not supposed to go down. This is the message of uh, this charismatic hour, and I enjoin you to take this message by the truth and sell it not. Let not your eyes deceive your mind, and let not your ears deceive your mind. Let your mind be in charge, and then you will be the best for it. I am done. Who is there that is saying, I have heard your word, and he has told me the truth. I know now that I am able. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in lack of protection. I shall not be in lack of guidance. I shall not be in lack of healing. I shall not be in lack of provision. Just like the shepherd, the good shepherd will not allow his sheep to be in lack. The same way the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Who is the person that is saying that? Who is the person that is saying, I don't want to see anything? I lose sight to gain sight. I lose hearing 
to gain hearing. My ears are open unto what the Lord has said. My eyes are open unto what God has, uh, what I see. What I see in the spiritual realm. I see heaven and that's my destination. I will not allow anything to make me lose my destination and turn around and begin to head the other way, the other way even turn around 180 degrees. Who is the person? The Lord be with you as we are doing that. All over the world, I know the word of the Lord has gone out. And I know that the word of the Lord is powerful. And I know that the word of the Lord carries along with it the spirit of God. The combination of the word of God and the spirit of God, the year, the miracles. The people are praying, I want to encourage you. Tune in again, the next charismatic hour that is coming. I want to pray right now. I want to pray and miracles will take place in the places as a matter of certainty. This is the word of the Lord. I am not kidding. I'm sure of what the Lord does and what he wants to do across the globe, even at this point in time. May I inform you, there is the combination of the word of God. Now, in the day of creation and recreation, something happened. Now, the Bible said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's a summary. That's a summary. Now, he said the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and that is a, a, a summary of uh, a, a, the need for recreation. And then the Spirit of God was uh, hovering all around, waiting for the Word of God. It takes the combination of the Spirit and the Word, the mechanisms, even the instrument of creation and recreation. Now, the Spirit of God is moving where you are. Wherever you are across the globe, the Spirit of God is moving. And now I will release the word and the combination of the spirit and the word will do the door, the work. And we yield the dividend. Now as I pray, thank you, Father, of our Lord Jesus. I do not need to pray too much. Lord, in glory, take glory, take honor, take praise to yourself. Eternal Father in glory, praise is waiting for you in the houses of the people. Praise is waiting for you in the lives of the people. Therefore, Lord, by the mechanism of the word, I declare that the people that have listened to this word, that have taken attention, that they will not henceforth allow their eyes and their mind and their, and their ears even to deceive their mind from this hour onwards as they take on this. Lord in glory, everything that is about them, that want them to sink, that want them to sink, Everything is sunk. Amen. Everything that wants them to sink is sunk Amen. in the waters. Thank you, my father. Amen. This is what happens. This is what is happening. The word has gone out from my mouth by the spirit of God. And the spirit of God has taken even the word that has gone out and then is walking in the lives of the people. In the life of the youth, in the life of the student, in the life of the person that is pregnant, in the life of the person that is looking for a wife or a husband. Eternal Father, thank you very much because uh, numerous testimonies, uncountable testimonies are, are filling the earth. Lord, remember I told you uh, back in 1993 that the knowledge of the Lord must fill the streets of the world like the waters cover the Atlantic Ocean. And you told me that you have heard my prayer. This is the day. Lord, this is the day. This is that day. Thank you, my Father. Thank you because I know it is done. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are praying.